Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Frame Devotional. Today, we're talking about the sin and the curse of stubbornness. Stubbornness is considered to be a sin by God. That's right. Now, that may seem a stretch, but as our Father hates everything that could hurt us, hence, He hates stubbornness. From the wordsmith perspective, stubbornness is, as we can figure out, an unreasonable unwillingness to change, unyielding, you know, those persons who cannot be budged from their positions or from their actions, even when they're shown the truth of it. They're fixed in their own way. Now, these attitudes can be taken to be positive in this world. You know how it is. You're doing it your own way. You dance to your own music. Ain't nobody can tell you anything. But according to the scriptures, stubbornness is sin and it's deadly. Why is it so deadly? The first thing we know about stubbornness is that it starts in the heart. <laughs> That's right. Jeremiah 7 verse 24 says, Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their own evil hearts and went backward and not forward. The heart is a place from which words flow and where actions actually form. And yet we are warned that it can also be an incubator for stubbornness. And so naturally, God disapproves of stubbornness because God looks at our heart and God interacts with our heart. So he doesn't want to find any form of stubbornness locked away in our hearts. God wants to see a heart that is void of rebellion, a heart that is ready to receive him and his instructions. The second thing is stubbornness sets self above God. <laughs> That's right. When we're stubborn, it is our own desire and our own liking that takes precedence in our lives. So we literally dethrone God from his sovereign place and we set up a kind of me throne. Judges 2 verse 19 talks about this. The verse says, and it came to pass when the judge or the king was dead, that the people reverted and behaved more corruptly than their fathers by following other gods to serve them and bow down to them. They did not cease from doing their own things and following their stubborn ways. So every man departed from the authority and the established norm of the day and did what their own heart told them to do. Kind of like, just do it. If it feels good, just do it. But it was now self over sovereign. And this begins a very slippery slope. And it's one that can transcend generations. Psalm 78 verse 8 reads, And may they not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. So the scripture recognizes that we can pass on this rebellious trait to our children. The other reason that God actually abhors stubbornness is that stubbornness says to God, I don't need you. That's right. It doesn't really matter what you think or what you say. I know how this is to be done, and I will do it the way I want to do it. Stubbornness becomes innate in ourself. But Paul gives us some counsel about how to avoid this. Romans chapter 8 verses 12 and 13 reads, So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh, not to live according to the flesh, for if we're living according to self, then we will die. But if by the Spirit of God, we're putting death to the deeds of the body, and so we can live. It is a call to submit to God. This death to self is saying, 
that we put God's desire first. We put God's principles first. The famous WWJD, what would Jesus do? We put all of these things into the mix when making our decisions. And it's always critical to us that we come down on the side of righteousness, which means we make no excuse for sin. That's right. That's one of the most challenging things about stubbornness. It's a way how we can rationalize away our sinful nature. We love to say, I'm just human. I'm not perfect. Of course we are. And this is why the Holy Spirit, the master teacher, the Allos, who is just like Christ, who is with us, is always available to help us. But there's one thing he cannot do is push himself into our hearts. We have to desire him. And the consequences of stubbornness are real. Stubbornness can cause the Lord to just allow us to do what we want to do. It's kind of like what happened in Deuteronomy 2 verse 30, where the verse says that Sion, the king of Heshbon, would not let the children of Israel pass. And so God just hardened his heart and made him obstinate so he could deliver them into the hands of the mightier nation. And in Psalm 81 verse 12, we also read a similar principle. It says, but my people would not heed my voice and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. Walking in our own counsels mean one thing. It means walking in darkness. And God does not want this for us, which is why he keeps pleading with us to not be stubborn. In Zechariah 7 verses 10 to 11, we read, But they refused to heed, they shrugged their shoulders and stopped their ears, so they could not hear. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, solid stone, refusing to hear the law and the words the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. And thus, great wrath came upon them. So we see God, first of all, pleading with his people, sending the prophets over and over because it is not his desire that any of us should perish. The question we must ask ourselves is, do I want to be sheltered from the wrath of God? Do I want a place of solace when this crazy world is on fire? Do I want to be cradled in the bosom of God where no evil shall befall me? And I'm sure most of us want to say yes. If that is your desire, we can pause at this moment to ask the Holy Spirit to teach us how to subdue self so that we can truly be obedient to all the biddings and the commands of our Lord God. Let us pray. Father God, in this moment, Lord, we humbly accept that we are stubborn. There are so many things that we hold so close to our chest. We don't want anyone to tell us that we don't need those stuff. We like to say, this is how I am and I'm not changing. So God, I ask you to speak into our souls and into our spirits so we will understand your desire for us far exceeds whatever trait we're holding on to, whatever habit, whatever behavior, whatever rejection that we've been giving to the Holy Spirit. We ask you today, God, to remove stubbornness from us. Let us not end up like Pharaoh, God, where you made his heart stubborn because he had already determined that he was going to be stubborn. Well, Father God, <clears throat> help us to be pliable like clay so the master potter can create something beautiful out of our lives. Lord, we yield ourselves to you, and today we ask you that we'll be obedient will be humble and will be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit because God, without it, we are going to be exposed to your wrath. And that's not your desire and that's not our desire. So Holy Spirit, teach us to be obedient, we ask in Christ's name. Amen and amen. 
May you have a day that's filled with submission and obedience to your God as I wish that you and your loved ones be blessed.